But Sheila's just tied um, a bow line or a bow line because what we're planning to do today, uh, here's one we made earlier, <coughs> is taking the pendants out, just the two of us. So not most people that own boats just get on with it and go off out. But um, what I've decided to do is leave our dock lines in situ because they're so well adjusted for what we're, we're doing um, and get a couple of extra lines and um, use those as temporary dock lines because we're not going far. We're going around to brooms to get some fuel. Um, so we wait until the tide has come in um, because we need uh, about five foot of depth so it's always nice to have plenty of water under you. Um, and then we will basically come out sideways and then um, spin round here, which is the most worrying part of the evolution for, for me personally. Because even on the flybridge of independence, you have absolutely no idea what is going on behind you. Completely and utterly blind spotted. So Sheila's going to be instructing me on, on how much room I've got to come back, etc. And hopefully, once we've done this evolution and we've done a 360, we'll then head off down the fairway uh, to the main river. Um, and then, of course, we've got to think about things like, you know, getting on and off of the boat. Because being high tide, we're very high up about three and a half foot um, at the lowest point from the uh, the bank so what she is doing here is preparing the ropes um, and so we'll take that rope which is our deck dock line off and then we'll put this one on and um, then we'll be hopefully ready to go and then we just obviously take our springs off and everything else. The hardest part actually is going to be the stern because the stern, if I just get off here a second, <clears throat> they all come through this rather small space here as you can see. Um, so what I'm considering doing um, and then of course You've got all of this structure and then behind here is seating so you, the first available sort of point to keep the rope is here with it looped along so that then Sheila is able to take it around the outside of the handrail and step off here and I'll then use the thrusters to keep her against the key. The other option is we use the swim platform cleat if we use the swim platform cleat, it's much lower down as you can see, we just put it around there. The problem then is getting down from there up to a key. Um, so I'm not too sure what we're going to do. We might just give that um, an experiment in a, in a moment. But what uh, I'm going to do next is start the engines, warm them up a bit and make sure that everything is running sweet before we actually attempt to uh, depart. Okay, so both engines started first try and we have water being ejected out of the telltales. And we have usually our starboard engine is a little bit more smoke than our port. So that's a thousand horsepower ticking over. And yes, everybody's looking in the marina. My God, that boat actually works. So I'm just going to let those warm up. No oil coming out on the surface of the water, which is good. So we're almost ready to go. We've obviously got to let our stern and bow lines go, disconnect our shore power. Might be the next thing. <laughs> leave and uh, rip that away so now I'm going to go up to the upper helm <clears throat> and uh, make sure that we have control up there and also get the hydraulics working 
which power our stern and bow thrusters, which are both 20 horsepower each. So she is just uh, getting herself ready there, live jacket, radio. The reason why we use the radio is because um, she's going to be standing where she's standing and I'm going to be there and there's no way that really you can hear over the engines and everything else that sort of distance so we're almost ready to go we've disconnected from shore power and um, as you can see we're just held, being held by a couple of lines at the moment so I'm just waiting for the engines to come up to some degree of operating temperature they will never really reach full operating temperature just ticking over we're just ticking over I've just put them a little of revs up to a thousand rpm um, and then we will get on with actually turning and heading off down there the reason why that is the most nervous or the nerve wracking is not just the turn here which is a nice wide basin but um, she draws or displaces so much weight and water that as we go down the fairway um, the other boats will strain at their moorings um, all the lines will start to strain and creep as the water is pushed in front of her and removed from around her and then rushes back so uh, yes so um, got our fenders down on here we've waited until high water um, and we're almost ready to head off meters you're clear One pound 28 pence a litre but as you appreciate it is the easiest fuel area to come to so uh, yes we did well she just about fits on their pontoon um, so what, what are the guesses for how much fuel she's going to take I'm thinking about between four and six hundred pounds um, we will see um, this is a refuel since she's been on the broad so she's done a fair few miles cruising around um, down to Lowestoft and other areas uh, lots of heating lots of generator use so um, it all adds up so the, uh, the fuel guy getting a bit fed up holding that trigger as we just passed 229 pounds and it still keeps going. So we just passed 455 pounds. Thank you. 
one, 472. So 558 pounds 46, 436.30 litres. I'm ready. Tide's now going out. Wind is pushing us against the quay. So we've decided just to take a little trip up the river Yare, um, heading in the direction of Surlingham and just leaving the sort of Brundle estate behind. That particular boat there, not that particular one, but that model of boat is what started this whole dream off. Um, Princess 55 looking at a 1988 one of those I still think they look lovely boats um, loads of accommodation when boats were pointy at the front and striking sort of like a reminded me sort of a mime device and stuff winds getting up a bit up here 25 foot in the air but uh, anyway everything's uh, going smoothly and yeah, mechanically 